All right, in this video, we're gonna look at another type of liquid battery animation. As you can see here, we have like a little wave going on and then I have some bubbles flying through the background of my battery progress. Um, if you're experienced with KOWP, you can even apply this to weather temperature, Wi-Fi signals, uh, cell phone signals and all that stuff as well. But for now, I'm just gonna do battery. Now, if you haven't seen this long video, I'm gonna skip over some of the global stuff that I did for testing purposes, but I do wanna show you the test inside of here and how I'm getting all this stuff to work. So let's go ahead and have a look at KOWP. So inside of KOWP, uh, I have a couple of different things going on. Right now I have this test switch set to off. And basically that's going to give me my actual battery reading. And my actual battery level is around 45%. As you can see, we have a yellow color. Don't even worry about the way the advanced editor looks right now. When you start clipping things, it can look a little bit funky. So let's not even worry about how it looks there because we know it looks just fine right here on the home screen. So like I was saying, what I could do is I could cut this switch on and I can actually start testing out other levels. For example, uh, I got my level set to 10. This is like me mimicking a battery level of 10% or 11% or whatever it was. But as you can see, the color changed and we also have a lower uh, liquid in our little circle here. And I can come back in here and I can do another level, say up at... Let's see what it looks like when it's fully charged at 100%. So let's save that, go back to the home screen, and you can see a little tiny piece up there at the top. Well, what about if we're at 0%? So let's bump that on down to 0, and we're probably not going to be able to see anything. Let me bump it up to like 1 and see if we can see anything on this. Um, you're not going to be able to see it in the video, but at 1%, not that red bubble, but there is a little tiny uh, wave down there at the bottom. And that's exactly what I want because I have barely just a charge. Now, again, this is just for testing purposes. So I'm going to cut that test back off. So the battery, this is what I'm using to switch between my little test level and the actual battery level. And it's based on this on off switch. So if this switch is off that I'm calling test, if this switch is off, then I want to get the actual battery level. But if the test is on, if this switch is on, I want to get this level here just to test things out. Well, check out this text global that I call battery. If my test switch is on, I want to use my global variable level. That's where I can test the level of my battery and see the different colors and see the different animations. Well, if the test switch is off, then I want to get the actual battery level. Notice the two differences here. This is the global variable level, and this is the battery info level. That's the true battery level. Now, right now, it's returning a value of 45. That is the current uh, level of my battery. But if I back out of here and I cut this test switch on, now this battery is going to return whatever I have that set to. And right now I have that GV level set to 1. So I hope you do see how I can switch back and forth there. And again, I can cut up this test switch. Let's cut it up to like 71. If I come back into battery, it's going to return that value there, GV level, because my test switch is on. Just bear in mind here, when you're doing this, you want to make sure, when you want your real battery percentage, make sure you cut that test switch off, all right? Uh, we have a GV duration. That's going to be how fast our wave moves. Um, if I bump this up to 40 for four seconds, it's going to be a slow wave, and that doesn't really look like a lot of liquid. So I recommend keeping that duration down somewhat of a low number. That way you actually get that liquid effect that you see right here. So that does look more like a liquid flowing through there, if you will. Now you also want to get, I'm using three colors for high, medium, and low battery. And also I got to show you the image. We're using an image to get this wave-like effect. And I'm going to show you where you can get that image right here in a minute. Now also what I went ahead and did here, I don't know if I did this in this video here, but I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, what I've also done is I have used a text global for my color. Basically, um, I like doing this versus me having to type in a code over and over and over for different bubbles and different waves that I'm going to show you and all that stuff. Well, you don't have to do that because you can use a text global and you can access this global at any point for any color that you want to use. So now what I'm doing here for this color is I'm looking at that GV battery. Now remember what GV battery is. GV battery is what we have right here and we can get one of two values. Either we can get this test level or we can get the actual battery level. So regardless of which one I'm on, if 
that GV battery is greater than or equal to 66, then I want to return my high color, the green. If this GV battery is uh, less than or equal to 33, that means I want to show my low color, which is the red. Otherwise, I want to show GV medium. GV medium is the yellow. It's going to get returned when our battery is not greater than or equal to 66 and our battery is not less than or equal to 33. Basically somewhere in between 33 and 66 non-inclusive. So that's how we can get our three colors. What's nice about that code is that we only have to type this in one time and we can use this in any color um, by accessing this global variable that I called color. So how do we set this up? Now I got this image here. I called it Wave and what I've done in Affinity Designer, I'm having a real good time with this app, is I've created a sine wave and I've got it all filled in down here and if I click on this uh, guy right here, and you know, notice everything else is a solid piece and this is a 720 by 720 PNG that I've exported and you can actually access this file from the following. Um, if you go to any of my videos, go to KOWP free stuff, click on that link right there and then underneath the battery wave folder you can get one of one or two of the or get both but the one I'm going to be using actually in this video is the small one the the big wave has a, a bigger amplitude and it looks a little bit too drastic to me you can barely see how this one here um, has a little bit of a wave to it and that's the one that I'm using in this tutorial so go ahead and download those um, just use one of them don't use them both uh, fi figure out which one you like but again, this is what it's going to be, and it's going to be a white color, and the white color is going to be there so that we can colorize this picture. That way we can get a yellow, green, and red for our colors. So inside of here, let's go ahead and get this set up. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this circle right now, and I'm going to take this clip all off. So I'm going to go to None. And this is showing everything that's going on in the background. Basically, what I've done is, I'll come back and talk about the circle in a minute. But I got a stack group, and I'm using that global variable that I've called wave. And I'm using a horizontally centered, this stack group here, I'm using a horizontally centered stack group. And basically, I'm putting two of those images in there. But before you go and add them both, let's do a little bit of color stuff, and let me show you what I want to do. So this image that I've called wave, I got its width set to 360. Basically, you can do whatever width you want, but I'm choosing 360 just because of the way I have this set up. You have to tinker around with different sizes. So also what I have down here is a filter and I have it set to colorize. And when you select colorize, it's gonna ask for a color. This is where I can access that GV color and I don't have to type in this code over and over and over again. I can always get GV color, which is gonna be depending on whatever my global variable battery is. And remember that global variable battery, it could be one of two things, either the true battery level or our test battery level. That way we can test these things out and see how it looks. So once you have that set up, then you want to create another, uh, just basically copy and paste. And you're going to have two of these images right beside each other. Now, what you'll notice here is that, I, can I pause my animation? I'll tell you what, I'm going to disable this for right now. So what we have here are two of these images right beside each other in a horizontally centered stack group. Now what we want to do also inside of this stack group, let's position this stack group and what you're gonna to have to tinker around with is somewhere around the 355 mark if you're following this tutorial. So let me take away the three, all this other junk for right now and let's just look at 355. What that's going to do is it's going to move this thing down to where it's just gonna be barely outside of this circle. Now I said I was gonna come back and talk about the circle, so go ahead and add a circle real quick for right now um, and just make its size a little bit smaller than what you made the width of your picture. Um, the reason why I say a little bit smaller, that way we can clip and we can still show a ring if we wanna put a ring around this thing like you saw at the beginning of the tutorial. You can try 360 if you want. I find something a little bit smaller is what works best for me, but to each his own. In a little while, we'll come back and apply this clip all, but we're not gonna do that right now because I want you to see everything that's going on. So this stack group, when I have its position set to 355, it's at the very bottom. And what we want to do is as our battery level or as our test level, depending on which one we're doing, as it goes up, I want this entire image here these two images i want it to go up 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 until we get to a full position so that's 355 is somewhere you got to experiment with 
again, based on the size of your circle and all that stuff too. But we also want this thing to move up. Now notice 355 actually moved it down. So to move it up, I'm gonna have to make this number smaller. So we want to subtract and we're gonna subtract a percentage of 360. A percentage of 360. Well, what percentage am I talking about? I'm talking about that value that I get from GV battery. And I'm gonna convert that to a decimal. So that's giving me a, a percentage of, and to move it all the way up and fill that circle up, 360 is a good number to pick here. Again, mess around with the 355, mess around with the 360, and also mess around with that circle size as well. And we'll come back and talk more about the circle in a minute. So now let's go to this animation and I'm just going to re-enable this and I had it set to loop. And what we want to do here is we just want to scroll. Oh yeah, and one more thing, dag on it. Uh, the position also of this entire stack group, notice I have it set to negative 180 as well. So let me go back to that animation. Let me disable this and let me show you why. Well, maybe you can see it here, but I'm still gonna disable this for right now. I have that position set to negative 180. And basically what that's gonna do is put this right edge of the second picture in my stack group, it's gonna put it right there at the edge of that circle. And what I want to do is I want to slide this thing all the way over to the right to where this left edge over here is gonna be on the left edge of the circle. So this is gonna to slide to the right and this side over here is gonna to slide to the right as well. And I want it to stop right there. And then when it gets there, I want it to loop and repeat this over and over and over. And this gives the illusion of a liquid effect. The sine wave that I created in Affinity Designer, is, uh, it's got the, the midpoints. If you know anything about sine and cosine waves, I have it set up to where, where one of them ends, like right around here is where the two images meet up. Where one of them ends, the other one begins, and it's a smooth transition. So you won't even notice that you really have two squares sliding across the screen. It looks like you know water is flowing in the background, if you will. So let's go back to that animation, and one more time, let me set it to loop. So I got it set to scroll. I got the E set to straight. Make sure you set it to straight. Normal will look a little bit weird because it has the, the slow starts and the slow ends. The duration, I have it set to GV dir. And the speed needs to be 50 because like I said, if we adjust this up to say 100, it's gonna go uh, too far to the right. So notice it's going, I want this left side of the picture, this left side that you see right there, right there right there. I want that to stop right there. And it turns out 50 is a good mark if you're using the same numbers that I'm using. You have to mess around with those, but notice it does stop right there at the left side of that circle. So that's exactly what I want going on. All right, from here, we'll come back and talk about the bubbles in a second, but let's just go ahead and apply this clip. So if we go to FX for this circle, again, mess around with the size and we go to clip all. And I'm choosing clip all because I want to clip these bubbles that I have in the background as well. But if I save this, I go back to the home screen. We had those two squares in the background, but you can, it, you know, it gives you that illusion effect that you actually have, you know, water or some type of liquid in the background. But really, it's just two squares side by side and it's looping. Boom, and then boom, and then boom. And that's what it's doing. So you can adjust GV dir to make it faster or slower inside of your global variable. And now to finish things off, let's talk about bubbles. I have four bubbles. Oh yeah, and I also have a ring. This ring is also getting clipped. Uh, this ring is just that white ring. I have its width set to 350 and I have a stroke on it uh, to give it some, you know, just some dimension to it. Um, that way you can have like your little window or whatever you're gonna be looking at as you see this little flow of liquid in the background. So nothing too special there, but let's talk about these bubbles. So I got an overlap group and these aren't any special type of bubble. It's just a circle and another circle. And basically what it is, is I've created one circle. Okay, it's got a width of 40. And then I have another circle with a width of 10. I've applied strokes to uh, both of them. Hold up, time out. Oh yeah, okay, with this one here, the little tiny one, that's that little tiny one, the little tiny circle that you see all there. Those are just filled because they're small to begin with. I mean, the size is 10. But the other circle, I do have a stroke applied to it. Um, as you can see, I got it right set around to six. But take note of the color of all these circles. This is where I can use that GV color yet again. That way all my bubbles will match the color of my liquid. Again, I like that GV color, that text global variable to get the color versus having to type that code in over and over again. That's very useful in my opinion. I hope that makes sense there. 
So I have my little bubbles and for their animation, here's what I got going on. Now this is the position of bubble one. I have it, uh, the Y offset is at 200. So that's putting it down here at the bottom and it's getting clipped. So you can't see it until it gets inside of this circle, that circle that we've applied clip all to. So I have it starting down here at the bottom. It's animation is a complex animation and I got E set to normal. I got four entries and basically uh, inside of here, you can you know tinker around with these numbers. I have a tutorial coming up in the future where I talk more about offset, but basically it's uh, negative 80. It's gonna move it to the left. Um, the Y offset is negative 450. That means it's going to move it up. I know you may think it's gonna move it down, but negative 450 is gonna move it up in this case. And then I have the X offset coming back to zero. So basically uh, by you setting these and then also notice I have all of these set to normal except for the Y offset. If you mess around with these normal and straight settings, you will notice sometimes it doesn't give that smooth rising transition. Um, I think if I come in here and set these things to straight, it kind of gives it like a pinball effect or something back, back and forth kind of thing. It's not smooth. It doesn't have that smooth flow to it. And mess around with it. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then what else do we have in here? You can apply various durations. And all I've done for all these other bubbles is if I go to, let me go to um, bubble number three, for example. If I go to its position, you notice I still have the Y offset set to 200. I have the X offset set to the left a little bit. So this bubble here is starting down here, not exactly in the center at the bottom, but a little bit over here to the left, as you can see that red square right there. It's animation complex animation, four entries, and then I've gone in and I've tinkered the X offsets, uh, like the positive 180, so this is gonna shift it over to the right. Um, it's still gonna move it up the same amount, but again, since it's getting clipped, you'll see it disappear behind that circle as it's flowing up or uh, whatever you wanna call it. So again, um, just different positions and different X offsets for the bubbles. Again, put those inside of an overlap group. That way you can have somewhat of a bubble look. You know, we got a, a circle, a little tiny dot inside of a circle. And all of that together, if I save this and go back to the home screen, uh, my battery level right now, let's find out, it's at 50%. And you notice the liquid is right around the 50% mark that we have here. And again, that is because I have cut my test off. Because again, remember, like I said earlier, if you want to, you know, when you're done messing around and testing things, come on now. If, when you're done testing things inside of your uh, advanced editor, then you want to make sure this test is off. That way you can get your true battery level. If I cut this thing back on, it's going to cut it up to 71. And as you can see, maybe you did see it jump up there in this funky looking advanced editor. And there you have it. That's a different approach to a liquid battery effect in KOWP. And that is it for this video. I hope it helped.